We love the arts so much in this part of the country, in Minnesota, and to have no theaters performing, no choirs singing, no orchestras playing, that had a public health impact on our community. Music being performed and made by the Minnesota Orchestra is a form of healing. If ever there was a time when we need healing as a population, um, it's now. One of my main projects has been how to get our musicians back into Orchestra Hall and on stage and performing while keeping everybody safe and healthy. Dr. John Hallberg connected us with some researchers at the University of Minnesota, so we entered um, a study with them. The first phase of the study occurred with wind and brass musicians, the people who can't play with masks on. They studied the aerosols that were produced when they played their instrument. They came here to Orchestra Hall in a second phase of the study and tested those same musicians playing right on our stage. The main goal of the, my study is to really understand this airborne transmission under different indoor settings. It could have different ventilation, different geometric settings indoors. People pay special attention to the indoors because in the indoor spaces, the aerosol particles uh, can accumulate over time. So they have much, much higher risks compared to the outdoor spaces where the aerosol particle will disperse very quickly. We use our equipment to measure the amount of aerosol particles produced when they do in different instrument plays. We have been able to evaluate the amount of aerosols produced by uh, different types of wind instruments. And so this gives us an idea about the risk level associated with different instruments. They tested not only the aerosol concentration that came from the instruments, but how it flowed from the instruments. And what we learned from that was the flow of the aerosols from all of those instruments was contained to less than 30 centimeters away from the instrument, which means that within a foot, the aerosol concentration is the same as ambient air, which was huge for us because we were already maintaining really strict physical distancing. Those instruments, they don't produce very strong airflows, and these instruments are built for making sound, not making flows. And so what we found is actually a lot of particles, once they're generated by uh, this instrument play, they don't spread horizontally and instead they rise vertically. That gives us uh, some unique insight. The trumpet, which is a fairly small instrument and doesn't have a tremendous number of twists and turns in it, that does produce the highest level of aerosol concentration. But it's also the instrument from which the air flows the least distance. Conversely, the flute, you might think, well, oh boy, the flute is very straight and it maybe just comes out and goes out in a jet sideways. The airflow goes farther from the flute, but the aerosol concentration of the flute is among the lowest of all the instruments. And it still doesn't travel further than 30 centimeters. And the lowest risk level of instruments is tuba. We found tuba produce the least amount of aerosol particles and the amount of aerosol we measure from tuba is even less than people breathe. One of the other things that we learned, the air exchange in the auditorium at Orchestra Hall is extremely good. The air is exchanged fully in that space um, eight times an hour. Backstage spaces, the air exchange is higher than intensive care units. That's obviously a real advantage to us now. This study gave us the information that we could use as part of a multi-layered approach to safety and health and mitigating as much risk as we possibly can. We all wear masks and we do a self-check before we come to work. We're also testing all of our musicians and staff who come here for rehearsal and concert weeks. They all are tested for COVID-19. I'm just so proud that the University of Minnesota was able to contribute in this expanding knowledge base that we're creating.
The more that we can add to the literature, the more that we can add to our scientific understanding of what happens when we sing, when we play an instrument, that has huge implication, not just now, but in the future. Overall, I really like the outcome of the research, and the, it tells us airborne transmission, if you can understand it piece by piece, you can develop a very, you know, regulated preventive strategies to cope with it. All of these things together, um, these studies that we're doing and our experiences in the hall now, are just taking us um, every week one step closer to when we can um, know everything that we need to know to welcome our audiences safely back into the hall with us, and we can't wait for that day. Yeah.